let's get started. So we're here to talk about how to socialise your dogs during the coronavirus restrictions. So the main thing that I'm thinking about here, although I was thinking about when creating this, was we have still got social uh, distancing. Hi, Paminda. Um, so we have still got social distancing in place, so you still can't um, go to other people's homes, you still can't meet out in groups, things like that. So places where you perhaps normally would be socialising your dog or your puppy, people are still there but they can't do the close contact side of things they normally would do so that's what prompted me to make this for you so it's really important um hi Gemma it's really important that you are still uh, maintaining the restrictions so I know it's tempting if you have got a dog or a puppy and you want to socialize them with people I know it's really really tempting just to to sort of go ahead and do it but it's really important you don't um, because we are still trying to keep everyone safe including your dogs and there is uh, the chance that the virus can be carried on your dog's coat and then they can come back into your home so your pets can't catch it and give it to you but they can still carry it and we just don't want to risk that so when we're thinking about people we can very much still socialize our dogs with them a really good thing about this time is the distance and I really want you to focus on that so it's good that there is distance a lot of the time when we're socializing puppies we can over socialize them so we can actually get them to meet way too many people at once they become way too excited and then every single person that they see they think they're going to meet and then you can get the bit of the Tarzan dog where they're just super excited wants to meet everyone the real good thing about what's going on now is you can teach your dogs to see people enjoy being around them but learn that they don't meet every single person or at the minute any person that they come past so you can really work on those nice calm greetings which is actually a fantastic opportunity that we wouldn't normally have because normally you'd have lots of people coming up to you and asking to touch your dog or stroke your dog or pick your puppy up or all of those crazy things so try and see the benefit of this i know it's difficult but try and see the benefit we can teach our dogs to walk past other people, to be in areas such as parks where other people are, but they don't meet those people. So they learn to be very calm around not interacting with people in a good way, but still enjoy seeing them, okay? So what we can do in terms of that is it's really, really handy if you can teach your dog a loose lead walk so they're not pulling on the lead, so they're calm before they meet people to start with. Another good tool is a nice heel command so i don't call it heel i call it with me or close um just personal preference you can quit what you like but when the dog is walking next to you um under your command but you know without the use of a lead perhaps so if you can teach your dog a really strong loose lead walk or a really nice heel command you can then ask them to come and focus on you and be calm around you in different situations so that's the first sort of tool that i really would encourage you to teach your dogs so a nice loose lead walker, a nice heel. In terms of loose lead walking, equipment can really be your friend here. So I thoroughly recommend perfect fit harnesses. Um, and Dan at Holes of Your Pets, he sells them and fits them. So do get in touch with him if you want to know about um, perfect fit harnesses. He's, he's really, really fab with that, as is JJ that's down there too. Um, a harness should put pressure kind of on the chest rather than the throat okay so when dogs are learned to walk and lead they pull quite a lot and it can cause a lot of damage to their throat so we don't want that we want the pressure to be on their chest so they're just moving forward and being stopped but not being choked with the perfect fit harness there's a d-ring at the front and at the back so when you're walking them you can either have them on the back so it pulls them across the chest or when they're walking they can be pulled from the front so it just turns them it's nothing nasty and they're full of nice fabric nice fleecy fabric so that's the first thing so teach your dog a really good loose lead walk a really good heel so that when they then do see people they're much much calmer already they're not going to overfill with excitement the next thing when we're talking about people if we're just walking past people you can ask your dog to focus on you so you're walking down the road there's someone else that's coming past you you can ask your dog to focus on you perhaps doing a bit of watch or look to look in your direction or just saying their name and every time they look at you they can have a little bit of a treat so that they're staying nice and calm and focused on you but they're still where the person's there and you can do that all the way past the person once the person's gone you can go back just having a nice little walk okay so it's basically counter conditioning making that person nice so every time i see a person i am nice and calm but really lovely things still happen so i like seeing people but i'm not losing my mind with excitement every time i see them okay 
so just a nice every time you see a person they're going to see them before you do as well and it's really important to remember that your dog's eyes hearing smell is just you know 100 times better than yours so they're going to be much more aware of the person before you are but as soon as you see the person if you just say your dog's name so Frankie and every time Frankie looks at you you just give him a treat carry on walking nice and calm you've got that loose lead walk and then you can just walk past the person if Frankie gets too overexcited you can just say let's go and you can just walk quickly past the person give them a bit of movement so he can get that energy out and as soon as you are past you can go back to working on some nice calm behavior again so seeing people really great things are happening but we're not meeting them okay you can do exactly the same when you go to parks and beaches and places like that so you can perhaps teach your dog a really nice settle command or a really nice sit stay, anything like that, where they just chill next to you and they're nice and calm. And you can literally just sit in the park and you can watch the people. You can give them treats every now and then. You can give them a little bit of fuss, kind words, anything like that. So when we're talking about like a reinforcer, it doesn't always have to be food. Food is a really good go to, but sometimes you might not have food on you or perhaps your dog's allergic to certain foods so you're a bit restricted you know kind words a bit of a game with a toy perhaps um or just a fuss you know we all just like having a, a nice little fuss so a nice fuss and cuddle nice calm things are happening around these people you can also take your general training to these places so you can start training around people so the dog is fully focused on you but again they're having this really fun great experience around lots and lots of other people so you could have them on lead obviously so that they don't run away after someone else playing ball or something but with them maybe on a long line so you've got a bit more distance you could do some sit stage you could do a bit of touch training with a hand target you could do spin just take that training outside to where other people are so that dog's having lots of socialization with all those other people they're getting used to the sounds and smells of other people they're really calm they're really under your safety control so when we talk about control we're not stopping our dogs from having fun hi Richard hi David um, we're not stopping our dogs from having fun. We're just trying to keep them safe. So that's what I mean by control. Okay, so it's not sort of domineering control. It's just keeping them safe, keeping them with you. In terms of other dogs, you can do exactly the same thing. Okay, so you can um, every time you walk past another dog, you can do what I suggested with people in terms of giving them a treat, keeping their focus on you. If they're being nice and calm when they're walking past, then you don't have to give a treat. You could just, you know, good boy, well done, keep talking, hi to the person, all of those type of things. So that again, they're just being calm. So we're just teaching them lots and lots of calm, great things happen around these other people and around these other dogs. And normally there should be a person attached to the dog so you can do, you know, two birds, one stone. When we're on places like the beach or the park, this can be more challenging because you might find that other people are perhaps not keeping their dogs on lead. Um, they're letting them off and perhaps they don't have the same amount of control as what would be uh, ideal. So they're letting their dogs rush up to you and your dog. Um, and that can be potentially scary for a puppy. So if there is an over exuberant large dog running over to them, that can be quite worrying. So again, you're just trying to make any experience that could potentially be a bit scary, you're making it fantastic for them. So in terms of firefighting, what you can do is obviously you can shout to the owner, could you please put your dog on lead, anything like that. Sometimes they'll listen, sometimes they won't. That's <laughs> just the facts of life, unfortunately. But what you can do if you are worried is if you have a handful of treats, literally throw the treats at the oncoming dog, turn around and walk as quickly as you can in any other direction. One, that, that stops the dog because they go, what was that? Secondly, they look down and go, oh, food, and start eating it. And thirdly, it does allow that person to come and put their dog back on lead. And you can shout repeatedly, can you please come and get your dog? And lastly, it allows you to give yourself a lot of space. If you need to, obviously, you can pick your puppy up and go. I would try and avoid picking up if you can, because when you pick them up, it can actually make them panic more. So for the dog on the ground, it can be really exciting because then your dog is up in the air. So they might start jumping up to get to the same height as you. And for the dog in your arms, all of their underside, they're really vulnerable, but it's completely exposed and they can't really see what's going on down there. So only pick your puppy up to move away if you really have to move away quickly. And perhaps you've got a young dog that can't move away as quickly as you need to. Other than that, keep them on the ground with you and they should be fine. 
most dogs have got good intentions obviously if you have got a reactive dog another dog running up to you is going to be much more concerning than if you have a puppy that you're just trying to socialize with other dogs either way we want to teach them polite greetings and another dog rushing up into their space isn't polite so for one it's not a good role model and secondly it's going to be quite worrying for um you know whichever whichever dog you've got really so that firefighting tool of just giving yourself some space asking the other person to put their dog and lead can be a really really good tool to have gives you a chance to breathe as well rather than panicking again if anything bad does happen just try and make it as good an experience as you can so you know oh no okay it's fine lots of fuss all of that you cannot, and it's really important to understand this, you cannot reinforce or encourage fear with treats or nice things, okay? So a lot of people get worried that if their dog is showing perhaps aggression towards another dog because they're afraid, if you then give them treats around other dogs, they're encouraging them to be aggressive, and it's just, it doesn't work that way. Fear and reward are incompatible emotions, so they do not work together at all. So if you want a human analogy, I am awful with spiders. I am not good with spiders. Cassie, I know that you've become quite good with spiders <laughs> recently, um, but I am not good with spiders at all, so big spiders. If there was a tarantula in the room, if you gave me chocolate, it is not going to make me more afraid of that tarantula. If the tarantula was at a distance, and over time you gave me lots of yummy things in this room so i had lots of chocolate so every time i walked into the room and the tank was in the corner i got given some chocolate over time my emotional state of mind is going to slightly tip towards liking being in this room so i'm still not liking the tarantula but i'm not as weirded out by being in the room and over time you can get to the point where perhaps you can hold the tarantula because each time nothing bad has happened and you've been kept within your coping zone and with lots of counter conditioning and lots of desensitization you've learned that actually that tarantula or that other dog in your dog's case precedes something really great happening so they start going oh i love seeing other dogs i really want to see other dogs let's go see lots of other dogs and you can start getting um a good side of things okay so we want them to meet lots of dogs lots of people but we do want them to be calm and we can't let them meet face to face in social settings at the minute so in terms of people and other dogs that's what i want you to focus on go on lots of walks work on your lucid walking work on your um your heel commands so that that you know you can work with them being next to you when you see other people lots of nice things happen so treats rewards of some kind so toys it can be um or fuss um and you know they just get used to walking past them but not meeting them they get used to hearing people talking they get used to being in places where lots of other people and other dogs are but they don't always meet them okay the other way um in terms of other dogs that you can work on as well as sitting in parks and walking past lots of them and things like that going on your normal walks is you can join online training classes so for example in nature therapies i offer a mixed ability dog training class on a thursday night via zoom and what that means is the same as you are seeing me on this live now is you can see me you can also see everyone else that's joined us and the dogs can see each other on the computer as well so the dogs can hear each other and they can see each other on the screen so it's a way where again you're getting them used to the sounds of other dogs and seeing other dogs um through a screen yes it's not ideal in terms of it's not as good as face to face but it's another way of doing it so have a look at different you know online training platforms in your area see if anyone is offering anything like that um and then like i say you know like we do we do it on a thursday night um and everyone really loves it the dogs really enjoy it they still get to interact so one dog barks the other dog stop and they think oh what was that you get some that sniff the screen to see each other so it's, it's just a really nice way of doing it so there are ways of still socializing dogs with other dogs without physically needing to meet them Another way that you can socialize your dog with other dogs, which isn't as obvious when out on a walk, is allowing them to sniff. So a lot of the time when we go on a walk, we get really fixated on getting from point A to B, whereas a walk for your dog should involve sniffing, it should involve stopping, meandering around a bit. You know, it shouldn't just be a tank from A to B. They should really be stopping and looking and seeing what's going on. Hi, Chris. Hi, Bronwyn. Um, so... 
if we let them sniff, they are kind of checking into their doggy Facebook, okay? So they are sniffing perhaps where another dog has been to the toilet, they're sniffing um, where their pads have been, so their pads leave scent when they walk, and they are picking up on all the different things. So from another dog's toilet, for example, they can work out how old the dog is, what sex it is, what breed it is, any health issues that it might have, its emotional state, all of those things can actually be picked up um, through sniffing where another dog has been. So your dog is learning loads of things about other dogs that have come before them, checking in on their doggy Facebook or doggy Instas. So that's a really good way of your dog learning about its environment. And then it's a good way of them finding information out about other dogs they might potentially meet on that walk. So if it's a regular walk, so maybe past your house around the village, you might bump into that dog and your dogs have already gained lots of information about each other from you allowing to sniff where each of them have been, which is fantastic. So that's in terms of socialising people and other dogs. If you have got questions, guys, please feel free to pop them in the comments. And what I'll do is I will get to them at the end so that if anyone does need to pop off back to work or anything, you can. Um, and I'll answer the questions as we go. So if you've got any questions about socialising your dogs of other people or socialising your dogs of other dogs, because that's what we've covered so far, then please do pop them in the comments as we go. Um, and I'll try and answer them as quickly as I can at the end. When we're talking about socialising dogs, it's also really important to think about traffic. So thinking about other noises out and about that your dog might find scary. So traffic, farm animals, um, other animals in general, like wildlife, things like that. If you've got a puppy, it's really important that they do get socialised. And if you've got a rescue dog, it could be that they haven't actually been socialised um, around these things at all due to their previous life experiences. So it's a really good thing to do for any dog of any age and it's really fantastic mental stimulation for them. So go on your walks, go past cow fields, go past horse fields, keep your dogs on leads, you know, let them sniff but don't let them run up to them, especially if you're in the same field, things like that. So if you're at a fence and there's cows the other side, absolutely let your dog go near the fence but leave a gap so that if your dog did snap in terms of did have a little bite because they're a little bit worried and got overwhelmed or if the cow turned around and kicked, there's still a gap there that they can't physically touch, but they're still taking in loads of information about each other. Again, make it really great, lots of reinforcements, lots of encouragement, treats, games, anything like that. Um, they've got to get used to lots of other sounds, so traffic can be quite scary. So what you can do is you can take your dogs um, on perhaps quiet lanes and build them up to busier roads. So obviously the roads are quite quiet at the minute, but you can build up to perhaps walking around a town where there's a lot more traffic, a lot more people, but you're not throwing them in the deep end at once. So you're doing lots of things gradually to help them work on that. Hi Robin, hi Jane. So you can work on lots of different things from home, okay? so. I'm very lucky I live in the country, so if I walk out from my house, I can meet different people, I can meet different dogs, um, I can meet wildlife, I can meet you know cows, horses, things like that. Obviously, I don't want you to drive to places if you don't have to under the restrictions, but I'm just saying use what you've got around you. So if you do live in a town and your dogs are quite used to car noises because they hear them in your back garden all the time, you know, you can start there. So if a really heavy lorry goes past and your dog freaks out, it's okay, it's absolutely fine, nothing to worry about, it's just a lorry, you know, just give them a bit of reinforcement, don't panic with them, just calmly tell them it's okay, go out on a little walk, if they want to stop and look at something, let them, so quite often when a tractor comes past, because it's so big, they might want to stop and look, that's fine, let them stop, let them look, let them take it in, and realise that nothing bad happened, only good things happened, okay, in terms of at home, you, with your puppies especially, you can get them used to loads and loads of different noises, okay? Same goes for any animal, so cats, rabbits, birds, anything. They've all got to get used to the hoover, the washing machine, the telly, you know, different programs have got different noises. Some animals are reactive to animals on the telly, all of that side of things. You can really desensitise them and get them used to the fact that all of these noises are completely normal and nothing to worry about at all. So, you know, put the hoover on and then have a little game with your puppy. There's nothing wrong with that. So you could put the hoover on in one room and then play a game with your puppy in another room or in the garden. And you could gradually get to the point where they're in the same room and they just ignore the hoover. OK, so there's loads of things you can do to socialise your dogs 
during the coronavirus restrictions. OK, one thing to bear in mind is that in terms of um, allowing your dog off lead, there is under the Dangerous Dogs Act 1991, Section 3, there is the out of control in a public place order. OK, and it's really important to remember that if you allow your dog to run up to other people or other dogs, you could be in breach of that. So you need to make sure you do have your dogs under control. Everyone has a day where their dog, you know, you just misjudge it and your dog runs off. It doesn't make you a bad person. Obviously apologize if it causes issues. But if you see people with their dogs on lead, especially if they've got any yellow paraphernalia on, so yellow or red leads, maybe a muzzle one. Um, some of them have got the lead guards that say, give me distance or um, a high vis that says, keep your distance. Obviously some of them could be sight dogs, um, or you know assistance dogs in some kind if you allow your dogs to rush up to those you could be causing a lot of issues so for one it could be somebody that's working um with a reactive dog so they've had very bad experiences with other dogs in um previous encounters so they're scared of them you allowing your dog to rush up could undo all of that work obviously if it's an assistance dog that could be dangerous for the person um, and it could be dangerous for your dog. So if you let your dog run up to a potentially sensitive or reactive dog that's had bad experiences, they could lash out and attack your dog. And that's not good for anyone. So you then set that person back in their training and your dog has then become injured, um, which could make your dog reactive towards other dogs. In terms of the people side of it, as much as we all love our pets, not everyone likes dogs and some people can be scared of them. And if you let your dog run up to them, especially if they're barking, even if they're excited to be barking to us, it could be terrifying for someone else. So please don't let your dogs, especially now when people are just a bit more worried about keeping distances, please don't let your dogs run up to other people or other dogs, even if you really just want them to meet lots of people and other dogs, it's going to do more damage um, than good. So please, please don't do that. So if anyone's got any questions, um, yeah, Hester, the warning gear is a really good um, idea. I have got, if I got them in this bag. So these are really good and you can get them from the Neon Dog Company but they're lead covers, so my dog requires space, so your lead kind of loops inside it, um, and then that just clips at the top where your handle is so that it doesn't slip down. But it means that when people are walking, it's at the top where your hand is, so your hand is kind of where the handle is, and it's basically saying my dog requires space. There's other ones um, that say like rescue dog in training, so if you've got an older rescue dog who um, isn't socialised with people or other dogs very well, you know, all of those things are really good. It just gives a bit of fair warning in terms of um, dogs.